In this video, we're going to look at the regulation of fatty acid metabolism. So fatty acid metabolism can be controlled via hormones such as insulin and glucagon, uh, similar to how, how glycolysis is controlled. And these two hormones will regulate the rates of opposing pathways, so uh, fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation. Now, the rate of beta oxidation is regulated by the concentration of fatty acid in your blood. And the amount of fatty acid in your blood is controlled by the hydrolysis rate of your tags in your adipose tissue by hormone-sensitive triacylglycerol lipase. This lipase, in turn, is regulated by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. And this dephosphorylation and phosphorylation is itself controlled by cyclic AMP levels. And hormones such as glucagon, epinephrine, norepinephrine can increase the amount of cyclic AMP in your adipose tissue. Now, when you have high levels of cyclic AMP, it can activate PKA, which is an enzyme we've talked about extensively already before. And this will phosphorylate our lipase. Once our lipase is phosphorylated, then we can have lipolysis in our adipose tissue. This will increase the amount of fatty acid in your blood, which will then activate your beta oxidation pathways in your other tissue. Now PKA will actually go and inactiv inactivate acetyl-CoA carboxylase as well because we don't want to make fatty acids if we're breaking them down. Now, insulin will do the exact opposite effect, uh, where you want to stimulate the formation of glycogen and triacylglycerols. So, when we have insulin, we have a lot of energy, so our cyclic AMP levels will decrease. Then you have a dephosphorylation and inactivation of our lipases, while an activation of ACC. Now, this fatty acid oxidation we can also inhibit it by malonyl coenzyme A, which is a compound we have saw a lot in the previous videos. And this is because it inhibits palmitol transferase 1. What this means is that newly synthesized fatty acids will stay out of the mitochondria, which is good because the mitochondria is where our beta oxidation system is. Now, we also have our AMP-dependent protein kinases, which can phosphorylate acetylcoenzyme A carboxylase ACC. And this is activated by our AMP and inhibited by ATP. But really, if we want long-term regulation, we will do that by altering the amount of enzymes, so the rate at which they're synthesized or the rate at which they are broken down. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.